Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Today I want to be talking about YouTube and what it's like for those of us small guys that have less than 1,000 subscribers. So stick around and we're going to go ahead and cover some cool topics. So as of right now, my channel has about 620 subscribers, so I thought it would be like a unique perspective to kind of talk about what it's like for those of us small channels still that are trying to work our way up towards that 1,000 subscriber mark so that we can hit monetization and just what it's overall like for those of us with smaller channels in YouTube. So like I said, I've watched some videos that uh, discuss a lot of what I'm gonna discuss today, but they're coming from people with 30,000 or 50,000 or 75,000 or 100,000 or more subscribers. And while we all start YouTube at the same baseline of zero and work our way up, um, it's a little bit harder whenever you get past a certain level to kind of remember back to the humble beginnings. So I thought it would be unique to just offer my perspective since I'm still a very small channel and we'll see how it goes. So I uploaded my very first video to YouTube back in June of 2017 and right now it's almost June of 2019. So it's just about right at the two year mark since I uploaded my very first video. So my first video, I literally sat in a chair, held my iPhone 7 Plus, and just recorded me giving a little video review of the, the, at the time it was the brand new Microsoft Surface Pro. It was the fifth generation, I think. And I wasn't on camera for probably the first like seven or eight videos I did. Like you didn't even see me, so it was pretty awkward. But what I'm getting at is I was a big supporter of using what you already have. Cause you know, look, we're starting out. We're not being paid to do this. This is something that you know, you want to just try to use what you already have. So I sat there and talked on my phone and just recorded the little screen. It looked terrible to be honest with you, but cell phones have come a long way since then and you can get some really good quality out of your cell phone. So what I'm getting at is use what you have. You don't have to start your YouTube channel with a $500 or a $1,000 camera or a $2,000 camera. Just use what you have because like I said, YouTube can be very expensive, which we'll dive into that a little bit later in the video. So like I said, my first few videos were done with my iPhone. I bought a little cheap tripod thingy with bendy legs so I can kind of like wrap it around like a, a pole or something and kind of get some different angles with it. Um, and then eventually when I kind of realized, you know, look, I'm making videos, I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new camera. But before I got to that point, I didn't really have a goal. I just filmed a video and put it out there just to see, you know, I just wanted a hobby basically. And that's why I started my channel. So I posted my first initial review video and I really didn't make videos for a while until uh, I think I did like a car repair, like a brake job or something like that. And that's when I uploaded my next video, but I wasn't consistent with it and I didn't have a goal at first. It was just something that I did when I thought I could help people. That was initially, I guess if you want, that was my goal was to go, look, I think that this review can help you out or me repairing my brakes could help somebody out, you know, save some money and I just figured I would do it. So I didn't really have a goal other than that and it was just very random and not consistent in the uploads. Nowadays I try to upload like one video per week and that fits my schedule because I work a full-time job. So after I did my first few videos, I started realizing I kind of enjoy editing these videos now. So my goal was kind of shifting. I wanted to now make something that looked appealing to my eyes. When I watched it back, I wanted to be able to sit back as a viewer and go, I enjoy watching this. So it led me to eventually buying a little Canon G7X camera. It was like five or $600 at the time. I don't quite remember. Um, and that kind of like, it took me up boop, just one little step. I stepped forward just a little bit from going from a camera on the iPhone to now I actually have a real camera. And I got into photography as well. So that was kind of my first step forward. And I just started learning a little bit more about the camera. Of course, editing, it takes time, it takes practice. So that was the next step. And then eventually it got me into um, a Sony RX100 Mark IV, I think, or Mark V, one of those two. And that camera was around $1,000. And that was a big investment for me because at that time I only had maybe 150 or 200 subscribers. And I got that camera and I kind of fell in love with the overall Sony ecosystem and the way that the Sony cameras look and sound. So I then uh, started saving up all the time for a Sony a7 III and that's the camera that I'm using right now. And that's my only camera. That's all that I have. It's everything I need and I love it. 
And you know what? I think that it's helped me get to where I'm at now because I feel like I'm still trying my best on these videos and, and trying to make the best quality content that I can and enjoying the process along the way. So what I'm getting at is at first, you know, I haven't made a single dime off of YouTube. As a matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. It's costing me money monthly um, and it's cost me a lot of money in gear, but I didn't buy all of this gear specifically for YouTube and that's what I'm getting at. You have to have a goal or a reason why you're making videos other than I'm gonna go viral or I'm gonna have instant YouTube success or in general just success down the road because there's no guarantee that you're ever gonna have a huge channel. So you just have to enjoy the process and have a reason why you're doing this other than trying to make a career out of it. Because a lot like professional athletes or actors and actresses, there are so many of them out in the world, but very few of them are going to actually be good enough or lucky enough even to make a career out of it or be one of the top tier people. So same with YouTube, you know, the, the top channels out there are not likely channels that fell into it overnight. They worked hard at their trade. They mastered learning these cameras and their editing. They've invested hours of time, thousands of hours of time, probably a lot of money. So the likelihood of you just becoming an instant success is very slim. Now there is a chance, but it's very slim. So my reasons for why I like to make these videos is I love the hobby of doing this. This gives me something creative that's not my full-time job. It's just something that I can do, but I also love documenting my family's trips. Um, I have a great camera now. I can take awesome videos of my family and pictures as well, and I kind of just fell in love with the whole process, and actually I do like editing videos. So it's a lot of fun for me, and I'm just really trying to enjoy that process all together, and of course making the best content that I can for my channel. That way that if and when somebody looks at it, they go, hey, that wasn't bad. It looked good, it sounded good, and it was. It gave me some kind of information or something that was useful for, for me and my application. So now that we've covered why you're going to start or the reason for you starting your YouTube channel, uh, like I said, I wanna get into the costs of it because if you want to try to succeed in YouTube, there's a good chance you're going to need a decent camera. You're gonna need decent audio and maybe even some music. So if you want to invest in all that stuff, you're gonna spend a lot of money. You don't have to buy the same camera I have to make a good video. And like I said, cell phones nowadays can shoot in 4K. You can still get a decent sounding uh, and looking video because you can buy external microphones for a phone or an iPad, or maybe use your webcam on your computer. That's, uh, those are all viable options, you know? And, the, the goal is is consistency. You don't want one video to look and sound this way and then the other one to be better or worse. You kind of want to have this nice consistent platform that at least love it or hate it, if somebody views your videos, they're consistent. And that I think is my goal and it should be a goal of yours as well. And so far it's been working for me because you know I'm steadily increasing in subscribers. So I think that that's just a good uh, baseline to start with. And a lot of big channels also have like a nice backdrop. Honestly, this is just a room in my house that I've you know painted to make it look nice for, for just us to live in. And it's a multi-purpose room, but I've invested in a light behind the camera here so that it can light my face well. I have these lights in the background that I think add flair. And again, a lot of these big YouTube channels all have this kind of stuff because every little bit of that adds to their you know, their overall image and their overall brand. So you kind of have to figure that out along the way. You don't need this stuff day one, but I think that every one of these little things tie in to having a successful channel that people want to subscribe to and actually want to come back and visit. So not only are all those things important, but I also think the overall look of your channel on the website. So it's super important to have that channel art, that banner up there, you know, take some time to learn and get a nice looking banner, um, have a nice profile picture of yourself or whatever that's applicable to your channel, whether that's automobiles, you know, something like that. You maybe have to have your own logo created if you want to go that far. Um, but you know, for most people, just a headshot or a shot of the business or whatever it is that you're doing on YouTube, that's what I recommend. And another big expense to look at is 
how are you going to edit? <laughs> so even more important than the actual camera is the computer and the software that you're going to edit in. So a good computer like a MacBook Pro or a nice PC laptop, I have a Microsoft Surface Book 2, these things cost thousands of dollars, so that's not cheap. Good news is, is that most of us use computers for so many other things in life, so it's not like you're buying a specific machine just for YouTube or video editing, but keep that in mind. You're gonna need a computer that can be able to edit 4K video if you have about a 4K camera, you know, and it's gonna probably require a nice graphics card and so on and so on. And I have the Adobe Creative Cloud, which is a monthly based subscription service, so it's costing me money every month just to have the software which I think the Creative Cloud is pretty much the industry standard. Of course, um, Apple makes Final Cut, which is a great video editor, but I still think that pretty much everyone needs Lightroom for their pictures and Photoshop so that you can make a nice, um, you know, the banner art. Pretty much everybody uses Photoshop to make their banner art. And of course, every video you upload, you really want to focus on the actual image the thumbnail image for the video. And you really want to have a good thumbnail image because that title and that thumbnail image are what most of us, including myself, look at. And that determines whether or not I wanna click on that video or if I wanna scroll down and find something else that's gonna be looking and sounding better than what yours is. So all of these things come into play. They all cost money for you. And again, here with the small channel, I've literally made this much money, zero dollars, off of making these videos. And I've invested thousands of hours of learning and thousands of hours of filming and thousands of hours of editing every single one of these videos and I'm not making any money. So again, you're you're gonna feel like a failure if your goal is to make money on YouTube because I, here I am almost two years later and I'm not there. There are other people that have been on YouTube for two years and they have a million subscribers already but the reality and likelihood of that is so small. So you just have to, I like to think of it as planting a seed. So you plant this seed into the ground and eventually it starts to sprout up. And you have the trunk of the tree, which I like to think of, you know, that's that's YouTube. It's the trunk. And eventually if you're big enough, it's going to start blossoming out and you get all these branches. So all of these bigger YouTube channels, that's what they have. YouTube was the foundation, but they branch out and they brand themselves and they have an online merch store or, um, you know, for camera channels that sell LUTs for their uh, camera, you know, for other people that want their image to look just like that person, um, things like that, that they branch out and they expand. And it's just other ways to make their career out of YouTube. But it's, again, it all circles back to YouTube is that, that root, the main tree root, and then everything else comes off of from YouTube. So I like to think of it that way. And of course, when you plant a seed, it does take time. It's different for everybody and their environment and what you have to offer that makes other people want to come onto your your YouTube channel and not only click it. Your video is so cool. It is. So at first, it's gonna be really hard to get those subscribers, but what you wanna do is try to be consistent in your uploads. So, you know, I aim for one video a week and I think that's good. There are several other channels, especially vloggers, that will put out a video daily or three or four videos a week. You just have to decide what works for you and your schedule. And as like I said, just aim for consistency. So I remember, you know, you get your first couple of subscribers and you're like, oh, someone actually wants to watch my video even though I sat there and didn't even show myself or anything on the camera. So um, eventually you hit a lull. You know, you're gonna get subscribers and then you're gonna plateau. You're gonna hit this plateau and you're like, it's just like, boom, you drop off the radar. But again, if you're aiming for good content, you're putting it out consistently, then you should slowly see it trickle. And what I mean slowly, like even now, and I've increased subscribers a lot lately, I've been getting one or two a day. That's really good for me. <laughs> so it's not for other people, but look, if you can get one subscriber a day, that's terrific. Uh, over the last month or so, it's switched to one or two subscribers a day for me and I've steadily been going, but there would go, I would go weeks where I wouldn't get anything, and then all of a sudden I would. So, you know, you just keep, keep plugging along, and again, the end game is not about how many subscribers you have, but you should have a long-term goal in the back of your mind. Mine is to hit the thousand subscribers, and then I'll reassess and make a new goal at that point, because at that point, I'll be able to monetize and start earning a little bit of ad revenue. I know it's not gonna be a lot, but at that point, I'm gonna get there, and at least I can say, look, I'm earning a little bit of money off of YouTube. 
Once I hit that, I'll reassess and I'll aim for 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, so on and so on. But for now, I'm just having fun making these videos for you guys, for myself as well, for my family. You know, I film our, our vacations and stuff and it's, it's memories for us. This is literally like a, a journal, or if you will, or a photo album that I get to put out there for myself. And there are several videos that I have on private that I felt like didn't fit the channel or, you know, just didn't do well in general. So I didn't want to get rid of them, but I put them on private. So that way, if I want to go and enjoy those, I can. So that leads me to the next subject. When I first started my channel, I called it Everyday CJ, and now it's just CJ Rich. Um, and the reason why I called it Everyday CJ is because I wanted to post a plethora of things. And whether it was, if it was like auto repair related, which I'm not a mechanic, but I do because it saves me money. Um, work related, so I fix computers for a living. So naturally, some of these videos are about computer repair or just technology in general. Um, I did some Disney videos, which I still do some Disney videos. Anyways, the idea is I would put out whatever. It could be totally random. And I think that's not a good idea, but at first I thought it was because I think what keeps people to subscribe is just a general bubble of things. Like right now it's more camera related, tech related, and how to, you know, different um, camera related things or editing things. So keep your windows small. And as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can kind of branch out, like I was saying, into other categories. But I think what makes people actually want to subscribe is having a consistent base. Okay, so one of the videos is pretty much going to be in this small little category instead of, well, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. I don't think people really like that. And as a matter of fact, if somebody subscribes to one of your videos that was a computer video, and then the next video I upload is me changing the oil of my vehicle, that person who subscribed over here to the camera is going to go, what, what is this popping up in my subscription feed here? I don't know what that is. And boom, they're off of your channel and they're on to the next. So try to keep that category limited to whatever it is that, you know, you're good at or whatever it is that you feel like you have to offer. Try to keep that window kind of small at first. And I think that the moment I kind of started focusing that onto a more narrow category is when also I started getting more subscribers because they're kind of into that one little channel that I was in. And yeah, occasionally I'm gonna post something outside of that, but for the most part, most of my videos are in that small little bubble. Okay, so real quick, I just wanted to show you some of the analytics for what a channel like mine does. So you can see my current subscribers is 622, plus 73 in the last 28 days. Uh, let's see, watch time in minutes is 70.7 thousand, and that equates to about 22.8 thousand views. And I've gained about 73 subscribers in the last 28 days. So I feel like that's pretty good. Like I said, I've been increasing as I've been going along. And look, a lot of the videos, my top videos were um, pretty helpful videos, I think. So one, how to replace a sixth gen Apple iPad screen, 10,000 minutes, watch time minutes, not individual views, how to change brake pads, uh, the Peloton bike for beginners, how to fix black desktop. That is my top video. Um, I think this has the most views out of all of my videos. So if I click here and then I click since uploaded, this will tell me how, so I have 50,000 views, almost 51,000 views on this. And it's gained to me quite a bit of subscribers, probably my, my most popular video in every category, I would say. And, um, you know, all it takes is one video like that for you to kind of boost your channel. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what plays actually look like. And again, I've made no money off of, his, off of these videos. As you can see, I am not eligible to earn revenue because I do not have 1000 subscribers, but everything else I actually meet the requirements of. But um, I just wanted to give you guys just a quick look just so you could see what you could look at expecting if you have a smaller channel. And again, I'm at 622 subscribers. So um, you know, if you have less than that, then expect these numbers to actually go down. So I'm pretty proud of these numbers because, again, I've worked really hard at learning this trade and making these videos as good as I possibly can. Overall, I'm really happy and really proud of my channel so far. I mean, I really think I made a good decision when I decided to start YouTube. I started off very slow and kind of graduated into where I am now. And another year from now, I'm probably going to be looking back at this and, and kind of just reevaluating and reassessing all the growth that I've had. Because again, you are going to have a natural growth and you're going to change as a person throughout your time on YouTube. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Hopefully I encourage you to 
either keep going if you already have a YouTube channel or start one and see where it can go. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you back out of here so you can keep up to date with my newest videos as I come out with them. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.